In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can take a regular dimension and convert it into a dimensional constraint parametric dimension. So let's start with just a, any object, in this case a square or a rectangle. And I have it dimensioned here using just regular dimensions. If I, if I look at the properties on it, I see that this is a rotated dimension. Its style is set to standard. And I can see some of the parameters here of my lines and arrows and text and things like that. Now, if we want to convert this to a dimensional constraint parametric dimension, what I need to do is I need to first of all go to the parametric tab. And over here under dimensional, we have this icon that's called convert. And this converts dimensions to dimensional constraints. So I'm going to select it. And then I'm going to pick my dimension. Notice that it changes it. Now it says D1 equals 5.1. And we see down at the command line that it says select associative dimension convert, which I already did. And it wants to know what type I want to convert it to. And the default is linear since it's a linear. But I could also tell it if I wanted to to make it a horizontal so that it always stays horizontal. But I'm just going to take the default and hit enter. And notice that the first thing that happens here is that it disappears. Um, well, that's because if we look up here on our ribbon, we see that the little icon for show dynamic constraints is not selected. So I'm going to go ahead and pick it, and our dimension comes back. All right, so let's go ahead and do this to the other one as well. I'm going to pick the same icon here to convert. I'm going to pick my dimension line. I'm going to hit Enter to make it linear. And now we see that these two dimensions are now parametric dimensions. So if I look at my parametric manager, which I have over here, I'm going to open it up. I see that I have D1 and D2. And I can change them. So I'm going to come over here to D1 and I'm going to change that to be 6 units. And notice that what happened was, because I don't have any other geometric constraints set, it made this length 6 units, but it left everything else the same. So again, just to uh, do a really quick recap on our geometric constraints, I'm going to go ahead and do, first of all, I'm going to do an auto constraint, and I'm going to select all the objects here, and it adds some constraints here. But I want to fix this last one. I want to make sure this stays perpendicular as well. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the per perpendicular constraint. I want to pick this line first because it's going to be the base, and this one is going to be perpendicular to it. If I did them in reverse order, this line would want to change. So I'm going to click here first and then I'm going to select this line and now everything is square. Alright, so I can do the same thing to my other dimension if I'd like. I can change it here or I can come over here and I can just double click on it right here and I can change it to be, let's in this case make this 5 units. And we see that now what whereas before we had a dimension line, dimension our square, we now have two dimensional constraints dictating the length and the uh, depth of our square.